Morning. Morning. I'm Dr. Jeff Lustig, and I want to thank Chris Wiley for uh, arranging this and inviting us here. Looking forward to spending the next 15 minutes with you. And I want to, first of all, thank all of you for what you do daily. And by any chance, is the Hancock's court driver here at the moment? West End? No. No? no. Oh, okay. Well, I want to thank that driver, because particularly in the winter, if we've got a snowfall, our street is the last hill to be plowed because it's a cul-de-sac, and I've seen that dr <laughs> struggle to get up, so thank you for that. So what I want to do first is uh, a little bit of housekeeping. On the back table there and over here, depending on which way you go out, there's some information for you. Go ahead and pick that up. Uh, there's a couple exercise sheets that I'll talk about that are also there. You're more than welcome to pick it up. And for those of you who are interested in perhaps seeing me, we've got a few gift certificates here. <clears throat> if you're interested in doing that, um, come up here, give Maura uh, right on here your name, address, phone number. That way we can get in touch with you and, and make an appointment time. Okay? All right. So what I want to say is Chris gave me these. Does that look familiar to any of you? <laughs> All right. So I read this over, and this is great information. It's good at helping keep you healthy and, and safe. What I want to do today is try and take this information and take it to a new level for you so that you can be healthier, that you're going to live healthier, longer, more active. Is that okay? Get that pension. <laughs> Get that pension and be able to enjoy it. All right, so with this picture here, it shows basically, you know, we grow, we mature, we age, and there's, you know, different lines there. And the average life expect expectancy right now is 81, but how long we're all going to live or how well we're going to live is up to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And this picture represents a nice, you know, gradual decline. Life isn't like that. You know, there's illnesses, there's falls, there's injuries. So this line is a little bit more wavy than I'm representing it here. But my goal is to talk about these things that you're in control of that can affect how well, how much you're out of pain, how well you're going to live and be active. Get rid of this one. So this chart here, I mean, optimal vitality, it's pretty tough to get up there. It's like getting 99, you know, going to school. 99 is pretty tough. Most of us live more in this area here. And the key thing with this is talking about inflammation in the body. The more inflammation you have in your body, in a part of your body, the more pain you're going to have. But what I'm going to be focusing on is the mainly the level of inflammation where most of the time you don't even feel what's going on there. So inflammation, the key thing to know about it is, it's aging your body. I'll give you an example. A little bit of inflammation in your body is like the alignment on the car being out of whack a little bit. But you put enough mileage, you put enough years on your body, it's gonna have the same effect in the long term that being out of whack or being in a lot of pain does in the short term. Does that make sense? Okay. So, let's get rid of this guy here. And So, the next thing that I want to talk about here is using this as an illustration of basically what we talked about as well. Most people come to a chiropractor because they've got an ache, a pain, back aches, neck aches, headaches, rotator cuff injuries, knee problems. So they come in here, and we work on you, and we get you to the point, hopefully, where you have little or no pain left. But some people decide to go on to further care because they want to not just get rid of the symptom, but they want to get rid of that underlying inflammation we're talking about. So this is going towards optimal health, whereas this is just basically out of symptoms. So on the last chart here, you know, getting you out of symptoms is maybe here, but most of us live in this area in here. So we are slowly aging, slowly deteriorating, and these five things 
can help slow that process down. So, where chiropractic comes in, because chiropractor among chiropractic care amongst most things, if you lump us with things like massage or physiotherapy, the key difference with chiropractic care is we're not just bone doctors, we're not just back doctors, we are working with your nervous system. So for example, if somebody is getting numbness or tingling down the arms and that's interfering with your sleep at night, that's coming from your neck. If you've got a rotator cuff issue that you know just doesn't seem to respond, and maybe you've even gone to you know a doctor or a physiotherapist for it, but it just seems to keep coming back. The component that is missing with that treatment is the nerve supply. The nerves control and coordinate every organ, every system, and every cell in the body. That's something we all know. So if you've got a recurring problem, whether it's your shoulder, your knee, your back, it may be because the nervous system isn't getting addressed. That nerve is needed to heal the body. Does that make sense? Okay. So chiropractic deals with the nervous system. Chiropractic also deals with the body. Regular exercise is important. And let me give you an example. Um, in your day-to-day -day activities, if most of your stress strain, most of your uh, physical demand is about your job. If you aren't, let's say, exercising outside of that, then your average day is what your body is used to tolerating. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what happens is Christmas time, uh, a slip, a fall, something that pushes your body over the limit, even if you're doing all of those good things on that chart, your body is more likely to show up as an injury in, uh, and pain. Now, you may already have that low-grade inflammation in there. And the other thing about inflammation is whatever tissue that inflammation is in, whether it's a tendon, whether it's a muscle, that muscle is structurally, that tendon is structurally weaker because of that inflammation. So you are already preloaded towards injuring it. For example, knees. The most stress is on the inside of the knee. One of the things we do for that is we'll often uh, do orthotics for a person. But it's the inside of the knee that develops the arthritis. It's the inside of the knee that most often has the tears. And that is due to often chronic inflammation on top of some other injury that just puts it over the edge. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I want to talk about these things, and they all interrelate as well. Not only to my practice, but to everyday life. For example, getting enough sleep. Most people don't realize that if you don't get enough sleep, your hormone levels switch. Our body does most of its repair physically, emotionally, psychologically, at night. If you're not getting enough sleep, that's not happening properly. So you are psychologically maybe a little more stressed, a little more irritable. That may affect you over here. Getting enough sleep means your body's producing the amount of growth hormone. Growth hormone is our muscle building hormone. If you are stressed out, if you are not getting enough sleep, your body starts to produce a different hormone. Growth hormone goes down, cortisol goes up. Cortisol, as many of you know, is the stress hormone. It's also a fat gaining hormone. So people who are not getting enough uh, sleep at night are going to tend to have a switch in their body compensation. They're going to be carrying a little more fat and perhaps a little less muscle. Okay? So if you're carrying a little less muscle, what do you think that's going to do to your chance of injury? increase it. So even sleep is affecting how well your body's aging, how well your body's performing. Let's talk about nutrition for a second. So what you eat, of course, is what makes up your body. But a lot of people don't realize that overall gut health, bacteria, the balance in there, makes a huge difference in how well your body recovers or maintains. If your gut is inflamed, and that doesn't mean you're having pain in your gut, 
But if your gut is inflamed, your whole body is inflamed. Again, making you more likely to have an injury or something come about. Uh, another thing about your gut is um, a lot of people these days suffer with anxiety, depression, mood issues. You're aware of that? Yeah? Okay. Your gut produces a feel-good hormone called serotonin. Have you ever heard of that one? Serotonin. 90% of your body's serotonin is produced by your gut, not the brain and the nervous system, by the gut. So if your gut is out of whack, it may be affecting your mood, your level of anxiety, your stress level, and again, that ties in with these other areas as well. So getting your gut in order can help with your back problem because it reduces the inflammation. You feel better. Now, yeah, there's a lot of medications that are out there that may help with anxiety and mood. And that's great, but it's not necessarily changing the underlying cause. So if the cause of your problem is low serotonin due to your gut, well, the answer ideally would be fixing the gut. If your shoulder problem is due to a pinched nerve in the neck as well as what's going on in the shoulder, fixing the neck and the shoulder are the key. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So we talked about sleep. We've talked about exercise. Uh, I want to mention again exercise because if your level of activity typically is just from your work, then you don't have much cushion. Uh, to give you a sports analogy is, you know, the hockey team that wins tonight, they didn't win it on the ice tonight. They won it in the practice and the training before. The Olympic athlete that wins a medal, they didn't win it during the event. They won it in the training and what they did before. So the more you do to build that cushion up with exercise, uh, with taking care of your back, whether that's chiropractic, whether that's doing back exercises, uh, all of these things give you more of a cushion. And it's not just so that you can perform better at work, not just that you, you, know, you don't have as much absenteeism. You work maybe 40 hours a week, maybe longer, I don't know. <laughs> um, but that's a 40-hour work week is only 23 hours of the week. So 75% of your week is either doing things you want to do socially or with family. So if you build up your capacity, you're going to have more energy to enjoy things on the weekend. How many of you basically get to the weekend and feel, oh man, I just got to recover for a couple of days? Okay, so doing these kind of things can help you raise your stamina, raise your energy level so that you can enjoy those 75% of the hours that aren't on the job. Anybody not want to enjoy themselves outside of the job? Or you want all your happiness here? Yeah. <laughs> happiness. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Now, I want to mention this. So here and at the back, there's a sheet of exercises. These are basically core strength exercises. They, they can help with the upper back, but they're mainly focused on low back issues. Anybody have some low back issues? Occasionally? All the time? Okay. So, I'm going to challenge any of you that have low back issues, or hey, I'll challenge all of you. Do those exercises. If you find any of them cause pain or discomfort, that's your body telling you you've got a back problem. If there's a weakness, if you can't do some of those exercises because the muscles aren't strong enough, you've got a back problem, whether or not you're in pain right now or not. So, here's a self-test. And if those are an issue, please keep doing those exercises until you can do them you know, comfortably. Your back will be better off. And I'm happy to take care of you as well. <laughs> okay. And so one, I want to shift over here again for a second. So we live most of our lives in this little range here. This is the range where I'll hear people say, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, if you're not feeling symptoms, you think there's no problem, but there is that weakness under there. So that kind of approach to your body and your health is like saying, well, 
my engine hasn't seized up, so why do an oil change? Or, um, hey, my car started this morning, so why do I need to do a tune-up? So, again, we live most of our lives in this range. And, again, that low-grade inflammation is where most of the arthritis and degeneration starts in our body. So here's a, a little picture. You don't have to see the details of it. But these ones are normal. This is neck, mid-back, lower back. Now, the average, or what's common, What's average, what's common, is not normal. That's my approach to it. So for example, these x-rays through here. I will commonly see an x-ray that looks like that in a 45-year-old person. That doesn't mean having an x-ray that looks like that is normal. It's common. Now, I have also seen people with an x-ray that looks like that that are in their 20s. So they're aging much faster. I've also seen people with an x-ray that looks like that, that's 65 years old. They're aging much slower. And how fast you age and how well you'll perform next week, next month, and 20 years from now ties in with how much of these things you're doing. And yes, chiropractic is a part of it. I'm biased, what can I say? <laughs> All right. So, want to check our time here for a second? Okay. So, we're just after nine. Um, I want to thank you for your time here today. And again, take any information you need, you want. If you do want to address something specifically, come up and get one of these gift certificates filled out for us. Um, any questions you have that are burning right now? I have a comment. Um... I threw my back out six times in the first two years. I've been going to him for three years now, and I haven't had my back go out in over a year. So he's the real deal. If you're, if you're suffering from pain, you know who to call. Thank you. Actually, Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll add one other thing. So if you're going to, actually, how many of you do go to chiropractors or have? Okay, um, awesome. So here's the secret to getting a good chiropractor. You want somebody that's got experience, and you want somebody that understands what you're going through, which usually means they've had that ache, pain, symptom that you've got. How do you know you've got somebody with experience and who knows your pains? Look for some gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Have a great day. Have a safe day.